Hi, welcome to our channel of Igno Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University School of Continuing Education Certificate Programs Certificate in Nutrition and Child Care CNCC CNCC 1 colon Nutrition for the Community Block 4 Effective Utilization of Food Resources Unit 16 Food Safety 16.1 Introduction while food contains all the nutrients that the body requires and benefits from it can also be a carrier of substances and microorganisms, living or otherwise, which cause harm to the body. Foods that we need for our sustenance and growth also provide material for the sustenance and growth of a host of microorganisms. Some of these microorganisms can cause a great deal of harm to the human body. Therefore, it is imperative that through all the stages of producing, handling, storage, preparation and serving, food is kept safe from such contamination. In this unit we will talk about the types of contamination and how to protect our foods from them. We will also discuss the problem of accidental or deliberate addition of undesirable material to food. This is called adulteration. How do we detect this? You will find some answers in this unit. Finally, we talk about measures that have been taken to protect and ensure the supply of safe food to consumers. Objectives After studying this unit, you will be able to Identify ways in which you can protect your food from different types of food contamination. List substances that are accidentally or intentionally added to food items. Describe the hazards of food adulteration and Apply laws and standards regarding food quality and safety that have been promulgated in our country to protect your interests. 16.2 Food Contamination Food can get contaminated by the water used for washing and cooking, by the soil in which it is grown, by the containers used for storage, preparation and serving and by the personnel handling the food at various stages, particularly at the stage of dishing it out and serving. Food contaminants can be of two distinct types, chemical contaminants and microorganisms. Let us discuss the two types of contamination in a little detail. 16.2.1 Chemical Contaminants You may know that we add chemicals to food when we salt fish and meat, ferment plant and animal substances or add spices to improve the taste of our food. These are just a few examples of the large variety of chemicals we add to foods not only to preserve them but also to improve their appearance, texture and flavor. Some are added to improve nutritional value and some to help in the processing of certain food items. But are these contaminants? No, they are in fact additives. They are added intentionally. However, in excess amounts they are harmful to human health. These quantities are prescribed by laws which protect the interests of the consumer. A permitted chemical in quantities higher than prescribed becomes a case of adulteration as you will see in subsection 16.4.1. Now let us come back to the question of contaminants. There are many instances of chemicals that are not supposed to be present in food but get into it by accident. These cause injury to human health. Such substances can be called contaminants. Pesticides are an example of such toxic chemicals. As time goes on more and more pesticides get accumulated in our bodies due to their presence in food. Such accumulation can cause abnormalities in the functioning of vital organs and body systems such as the kidney, circulatory system, blood, and brain. Some pesticides have been linked to cancer. Besides pesticides, Chemicals that may leach into food from packing material, or trace amounts of lubricants that can get into the food from processing machinery are all unintentional contaminants in our food. Poisons like lead and cadmium can enter the food through improperly coated utensils. These poisons are also called industrial contaminants of food. This is because factories and industries release many of these chemicals into rivers and lakes as part of their waste. This then gets into the soil and plants. Their hazards are described in Table 16 to 1. Table 16.1 Major Industrial Contaminants or Food Look at the screen for table content.
This table includes several terms you may not be familiar with. To help you along here is a box that lists difficult terms with their meaning. Box 16.1 Understanding the technical jargon Pollutant Harmful substance entering water, soil or air because of pollution. Pollution Polluted The contamination of water, soil, and air by harmful chemicals and other substances including microorganisms. Fungicides Chemicals that kill molds or fungi. Acute Immediate effects that appear in a few hours or days. Cumulative, long-term effects that appear over a period of time. Anemia low level of hemoglobin in the blood. Abortion, killing the fetus, unborn baby. Stillbirths, baby born dead. Irreversible changes, changes that cannot be reversed on treatment. Permanent changes. Paralysis. Condition where it becomes impossible to move the affected part or control its functions. Convulsions, fits wherein the person shakes violently and cannot control his movements. Saliva usually drips out of the mouth and the person may even choke on his tongue. Neonatal deaths, deaths of newborn infants. 16.2.2 Contamination by microorganisms. You are probably already familiar with the term microorganism. Microorganisms are tiny, living cells. Bacteria and viruses are microorganisms as you studied in Unit 14. Certain microorganisms contaminate food and cause disease in individuals who consume this food i.e. they cause food poisoning. Food poisoning, in other words, is the term used to refer to the harmful effects of consuming food contaminated by microorganisms. Food poisoning is classified into two categories, a. Food infections, and b. Food intoxications. Food infections generally involve microorganisms present in the food at the time it is consumed. Once inside the human being, they begin to grow and cause disease. Diseases like cholera, dysentery, and typhoid are examples of infectious diseases caused by eating contaminated food. A number of viral infections also may be contracted by man through contaminated food that has not been processed or handled adequately. These are infectious hepatitis, poliomyelitis, and various respiratory and intestinal disorders. Food intoxications involve toxic substances produced in the food by microorganisms before it is consumed. When such food is eaten the person becomes sick because of the toxin. Staphylococcus aureus and Clostridium botulinum cause bacterial food poisoning because of the toxins they give rise to in the food. Poisons produced by Staphylococci cause severe nausea, vomiting and abdominal pain. The toxin produced by Clostridium botulinum can kill. It causes dizziness, difficulty in swallowing, speaking and breathing and finally paralyzes the neck arm and leg muscles as well as the respiratory system. Certain molds also produce toxins in the food they attack. These toxins are called mycotoxins. The ones commonly known are the aflatoxins found in peanuts and sometimes maize, wheat, rice, sorghum and soya beans as well, which have been attacked by a particular mold. They cause liver diseases among those who consume such infected foods. The ergot fungus is associated with bajra, wheat, jowar and rye. This fungus produces toxins that result in ergotism. The toxin causes gastrointestinal disturbances, painful cramps in the legs, gangrene in fingers and toes, depression, weakness and convulsions. Gangrene is a condition where body parts begin to get destroyed due to infection. Such parts often have to be cut off otherwise they can spread to other parts of the body. Appendix 3 gives some food infections and intoxications along with the causes and the type of foods usually involved in our country. After going through this table, we hope you will realize how absolutely imperative it is to implement the strictest possible standards of cleanliness in our food-related activities. It is important to mention here that food vendors that are always present around schools and offices selling sugarcane juice, colored sherbats, pani puri, bhel puri, 
Chatter cut and sliced fruits are responsible for gastrointestinal bacterial infections as well as chemical poisoning by using non-permitted food colors. Highlight 6 gives you the main precautions to keep in mind so as to avoid contamination by bacteria and molds i.e. to avoid food poisoning. Highlight 6. How to get the better of bacteria and molds bacteria. 1. Observe the rules of food hygiene at every stage in the handling of food. People known to be harboring infections should not be allowed to handle foodstuffs at the critical stages of preparation and distribution. 2. Keep perishable foods under deep freeze or refrigeration in a clean condition immediately after purchase to prevent multiplication of bacteria already present. The refrigerator should be kept clean and foodstuffs must be placed in it in such a way that cold air can freely circulate around different items. This is to make sure that the foodstuffs kept in the refrigerator are cooled rapidly and kept cold. No spoiled food should be placed in a refrigerator, lest it spoils other foods too. 3. Cook foods for a sufficient length of time and at temperatures high enough to destroy the bacteria. Meat should be cut into small pieces to ensure thorough penetration of heat. If required in large chunks, meat should be roasted or pressure cooked. 4. Do not keep foods exposed, especially after cooking. If the food is to be consumed later, it should be promptly cooled and then put in the refrigerator. 5. If the food has been refrigerated for a long time, it should be reheated before consumption. 6. Foodstuffs such as custard-filled bakery products should be reheated in an oven at 200 C for 20 to 30 minutes before consumption. 7. Storage, cooking and service areas should be kept clean and free from insects and rats. Molds, fungi 1. Never buy any food in a poor condition. Overripe, discolored, bruised or cut vegetables and fruits, for example, should not be purchased. Even cheese showing cottony spots on the surface must be discarded because there is no way of knowing whether the mold is good or bad. When buying fruits to last for several days, it is advisable to stagger the ripeness, so that at the time of consumption, the fruit is just ripe and not overripe. In other words, don't buy all at the same stage of ripeness. Buy fruits that are slightly underripe. 2. If mold growth is noticed on any food, Never scrape it off and eat the remaining food, as is normally done with coconut. It is just not safe. If for example, the stem area of a ripe and healthy looking tomato or plum shows mold growth, it must be rejected. For the fuzz or fluff is merely the bloom of the mold and there will be roots that may have spread throughout the food. Cooking does not always destroy fungal toxins in foods and hence does not rely on getting rid of the poisons by boiling or cooking. 3. Store perishable foods carefully so that molds it not permitted to grow. Refrigeration generally inhibits mold growth but does not arrest it completely. In fact, some refrigerators show black spots due to mold growth, which must be removed by washing and subsequent drying. Drying is essential. If drying is omitted, the mold will remain because, of all the factors favoring mold growth, Moisture availability is the most important. 4. Food grains and nuts must be dried immediately after harvesting and only when sufficiently dry should be stored in clean, dry airtight containers in a cool place. The stored goods must be periodically inspected for caking i.e., dumping together forming small or large lumps. If the grain shows caking, it must be dried again and then stored. 5. Mold contaminated foods must always be burnt or buried and not simply discarded lest the mold spreads and contaminates other human or animal foods. You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learning GNU. Check your progress exercise. 1. 1. List the four different ways in which food can get contaminated. 2. What are the two distinct types of food contaminants that we need to worry about? 16.3. Food Adulteration We have just discussed various aspects of food contamination. We did differentiate between food contaminants and additives in the last section. Let us now move on to a study of food adulteration. 
an adulteration is an act by which something is added to a food item that is inferior in quality or makes it impure with the intention of making more profit or something is removed from a food item which reduces its quality. The commonest examples are adding water to milk in order to increase volume and removing part of the cream from the milk without the consumer's knowledge. Mixing green cardamoms from which essential oils have been removed with good quality green cardamoms is also an example of adulteration. Any substance which is used to adulterate a particular item of food is called an adulterant. Water is an adulterant for milk and semolina is an adulterant for fine grain sugar. Metanil yellow which is used to give a bright, yellow color to turmeric is an adulterant. Papaya seeds are adulterants for black pepper. Adulterated food may only make us undergo a monetary loss by making us pay partly for the rubbish that is added to the food. However, it may actually endanger health like in the case of metanil yellow as you will see in the following discussion. 16.3.1 Common Adulterants and Their Health Hazards Adulterants need not always be harmful. Unscrupulous shopkeepers mix poorer quality rice with better quality rice, such as basmati. This is a good example. The poor quality rice would not harm us. However, this does mean not getting full value for our money. There are, however, several adulterants that can cause harm. We have listed these here. Sand, marble chips, gravel and earth, mostly added to grains, pulses, coriander seeds, rice etc. If ingested they can upset the digestive system besides being carriers of infection. They are extremely unpleasant in the mouth and can hurt the teeth and the gums. Water, mostly used to adulterate milk. Generally, the source of the water is not clean and therefore it also carries infections. Petroleum oils, used for adulterating edible oils. Used motor oils are an example. These oils are toxic and cancer-causing. Mineral oil, used for coating black pepper to prevent fungal growth. These can be serious health hazards as some mineral oils are toxic for human beings and contain compounds capable of causing cancer. Agamene seeds and oil. Agamene is a yellow-flowered plant that looks like a poppy with bluish, silver-veined prickly leaves. Agamene seeds resemble mustard seeds and they are mixed with them during the extraction of mustard oil. Both the seeds and oil are highly toxic and the consumer can lose his eyesight and develop a condition called epidemic dropsy. When such adulteration takes place we have an epidemic of these symptoms. Dropsy is a disease in which watery fluid collects in cavities or tissues of the body causing swelling. The disease starts with gastrointestinal disturbances and irregular fever with a rash on exposed parts of the body. Death can occur due to cardiac arrest, i.e., the heart stops beating. Lathyrus sativus, Kesri dal. Kesri is a very hardy plant and the pulse derived from it is used to mix with Bengal gram which is more expensive, in order to make Bengal gram flower. In the villages of Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh, it is also used as wages for farm labor. It can cause a form of crippling paralysis in boys and men 5 to 45 years old. The disease is called lathyrism. The disease starts with the stiffness of the knee joints and legs with pain around the knee and ankle J01L1TS, as well as in the back thighs. You can read more on this aspect in Unit 19 of Block 5. Papaya seeds are used to adulterate black pepper. Talc, used to polish pulses. Talc has been linked to stomach cancer. Washing soda or maida, used to adulterate icing sugar. Metanil yellow and lead chromate, used to give color to turmeric and to jalebis. These are highly poisonous. Metanil yellow affects the reproductive organs and can dot cause sterility. It has also been associated with stomach trouble and cancer. The possible health hazards of lead chromate include anemia, iron hemoglobin, levels in blood, paralysis and brain damage, especially in children. Used tea leaves, dried, powdered and colored, are used to adulterate tea leaves. 
use tea leaves can be the cause of infection and food poisoning depending on the source from which they are collected. Malachite green, used to color dried peas a bright green so that they look like fresh peas. This can be poisonous and can cause cancer and abnormalities in vital organs such as the kidney, spleen and liver. The color has also been known to cause abnormalities taught in the fetus in experiments conducted on animals. Colored sawdust, is used to adulterate red chili powder. This can upset digestion and cause infection. 16.3.2 Simple Tests to Detect Adulteration Tests are available by which one can detect adulteration in quite a few of our commonly adulterated foods. Some of them do require a few simple reagents and chemicals or tools which can be easily purchased without too much cost, and it is worth going to the trouble of keeping a stock of these for ready testing. Let us talk about the simplest of these tests. Detecting the presence of excess water in milk. This can be done by measuring the specific gravity of the milk with a small gadget called a lactometer. You can buy it in the market. Try the scientific equipment shops. A specific gravity reading of less than 4 is an indication of excess water in milk. Detecting fine sand or semolina in fine green sugar or salt. Stir a little of the sample into a glass of clean water. The sugar or salt will dissolve leaving a residue of the sand or semolina at the bottom of the glass. Detecting sand or dirt in jaggery. Boil a little jaggery in water. Jaggery will dissolve leaving sand and dirt at the bottom. Detecting adulteration of black pepper with papaya seeds. Put a sample in a glass of water. Papaya seeds will float and the pepper corns will settle at the bottom. You would have noticed that these tests did not require you to use any special equipment or chemical reagents. Appendix 5 gives you some simple tests that do require special equipment and chemicals. For your convenience, these have also been listed. Appendix 4. Highlight. 7 lists the March 6 R precautions you can take to protect yourself against adulteration. Highlight. 7 What you can do to fight adulteration. Caution is the watchword. If you are careful and you take sufficient precautions you can protect yourself from the hazards of adulteration. Keep the following points in mind. 1. Buy food items in packed form. Don't buy loose oils or spices in particular. 2. Buy from familiar shops and cooperative stores. 3. Look for quality marks such as ISI, UGMARK, FPO. 4. Reject artificially colored rice, pulses, sweets, spices. 5. Use natural colored foods to brighten up meals and teach others to do the same. If artificial coloring is a must, Buy colors with the ISI stamp. 6. Grind your own spices, basin, cereal flowers if possible. Check your progress exercise. 2. 1. Which of the following can be called adulterants? Indicating by marking a tick. I. Poor quality rice 2. Good quality rice 3. Water 4. Agamini seeds V. Mustard seeds Y. Mineral oil 7. Castor oil 8. Motor oil 9, case redal X, sand. 2. Describe any two simple tests whereby you can test for adulteration in A. Spices, B. Milk. 16.4. Protecting the consumer. Most of us in India spend the highest percentage of our income on food. We would like to get the maximum returns for the money we spend without compromising on quality unless we do so as a matter of choice. In Unit 13 we discussed what food quality means. It would be worth repeating here that among other attributes, it includes nutritional quality, absence of toxicity as well as microbial safety. These attributes must be evaluated before declaring any food as wholesome. Food products must be produced under strict hygienic conditions, free from contaminants processed without much loss of nutritive value packaged under sanitary conditions and marked with suitable labels. As buyers and consumers it is our right to know what we are consuming. We should also be able to protect our right of acquiring clean and wholesome food. Several laws have been promulgated to protect the interests of consumers in various countries. We, in India, 
also have certain food laws and minimum standards of quality laid down for a large number of food items. 16.4.1 Food laws Food laws are extremely important for providing wholesome, nutritious, poison-free food to the public. Food laws encourage the production and handling of food under hygienic conditions, and also prevent the chemical and microbiological contaminations which are responsible for the outbreak of foodborne diseases and other health hazards affecting large segments of the population. The main objectives of food laws can be briefly summarized as follows. 1. To protect the consumer against any health hazards arising out of adulteration. 2. To protect the consumer from unfair trade practices. 3. To ensure and enforce fair trade practices. The government of our country has passed a number of laws to protect the interest of the consumers in this regard. We shall discuss some of these which concern us directly. Prevention of Food Adulteration Act, referred to as the PFA Act in short, it came into effect from June 1, 1955. It pertains to food sold, and defines in specific words what is meant by a food adulterant, and what shall be considered to be an adulterated food. According to it, food can deem to be adulterated when any one of the following acts are resorted to. Admixture of inferior or cheap substances. Extraction of certain quality ingredients from the food. Preparing and packing under unsanitary conditions. Sale of insect infested food. Obtaining food from a diseased animal. Incorporation of a poisonous component. Use of coloring matter or preservatives other than, or in quantities greater than that approved for the food. Sale of substandard products which may or may not be injurious to health. These are the prohibited practices under the PFA Act. Persons found guilty of selling such adulterated food can be punished, the severity of punishment depending upon the gravity of the offense. The Act is implemented by the state governments and the local authorities. They provide laboratory facilities for dependable and quick analysis in addition to management facilities for implementing the PFA Act. The local health or food authorities are invested with executive powers to inspect, collect and analyze stored and marketed foodstuffs and finally prohibit the sale of foods found to be adulterated. The PFA Act provides guidelines for the minimum basic requirements of food quality. The guidelines are primarily intended to protect consumers from the health hazards of poisonous food. The Act also covers requirements for labeling of food products. You may have come across labels which try to trick your backslash L into thinking that it is the label for a well-known product. The name is usually slightly different or the design of the package imitates that of another product. The PFA Act calls this misbranding and provides for measures to tackle this malpractice. Check your progress exercise. 3. 1. Which of the following should be considered cases of adulteration according to the PFA Act? Indicate by marking a tick. I. Mixture of parmal rice in basmati. 2. Mixture of broken basmati grains in basmati rice of better quality. 3. Mustard oil showing traces of argamini oil. 4. Permitted preservatives within amount prescribed. V. Banned color in jalebis. Y. Permitted color in amounts over that prescribed. 7. Insect infested dull. 8. Meat packed in a dirty slaughterhouse. 9. Meat packed in transparent polythene. X. Mixture of used tea leaves in fresh. The fruit products order, with the exception of traditional items like pickles and chutneys, the fruit and vegetable preservation industry in India started in the early 30s. It gained strength during the Second World War to meet the needs of the Defense forces, and a number of units got started all over the country. It was, therefore, felt that there was a need to discipline these units and exercise checks on the quality of fruit products they produced. For this purpose, the Fruit Products Order, FPO, was promulgated in 1955. It came under the Essential Commodities Act. For export purposes, the fruit products are further subjected to pre-shipment inspection under the provisions of the Export Act of 1963. Under the provisions of FPO, 
it is obligatory to obtain a license for manufacture of fruit products. The FPO lays down hygienic and sanitary requirements for setting up factories for the manufacture of fruit products, which include 1. Suitable location 2. Minimum fly-proof requirement and adequate storage space 3. Construction and maintenance of factory premises and 4. Workers' amenities and personal hygiene the order lays down statutory minimum standards in respect of the quality of various fruit and vegetable products, and processing facilities. Packing fruits and vegetables of a standard below that prescribed by this order is an offense punishable by law. Meat Products Control Order This makes it illegal to transport meat unless it has been prepared and processed according to the provisions of the order, and carries the mark of inspection. It provides for means to detect and destroy meat of diseased animals. Ensure that the preparation and handling of meat and meat products be conducted in a clean and sanitary manner. Prevent the use of harmful substances in meat foods. See that every piece of meat is inspected before sale to ensure its wholesomeness. The order also lays down rules and conditions for procedures to be adopted for the selection of disease-free animals, slaughterhouse practices and further treatment of the meat so as to maintain the meat in a wholesome manner, devoid of harmful microorganisms. Besides these, there are several other orders promulgated under the Essential Commodities Act of 1946 which provide, in the interest of the general public, for the control of production supply and distribution of, and trade and commerce in, certain commodities. You are listening to this audiobook on Audio Learning GNU. 16.4.2, Food Standards and Certification for Quality Control. In general, quality is commonly thought of as a degree of excellence, A quality perhaps being the top degree of excellence, B quality being a little less than in excellence, and C quality being even lesser in excellence. In the broader sense quality is considered as a specification or set of specifications that are to be met. Quality characteristics include those relating to general appearance, size and shape, gloss, color, consistency, etc. We have two organizations that are empowered to lay down standards of quality for food items and to certify that these standards are met. These are the Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS and the Directorate of Marketing and Inspection. The Indian Standards Institution, LSI, now called the Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, is the national standards body of our country. It operates the Voluntary ISI, Certification Marks, Act of 1952 which has laid down standards of quality of processed food items supported by precise methods of testing these standards. The ISI Act 1952 empowers the Bureau of Indian Standards to establish and publish Indian standards in relation to any article or process, recognize other standards as Indian standards, specify the ISI certification mark, and grant, renew, suspend, or cancel the license for the use of certification under the conditions prescribed by BIS. It covers almost all consumer goods from electrical equipment utensils and cosmetics to processed food products. As regards food items, ISI mark is granted to a food processing unit only if the proper hygienic conditions are maintained, in addition to the availability of testing facilities for quality checking of the products. Food items such as biscuits, baby foods, and canned foods are ISI marked. The ISI certification scheme though voluntary becomes mandatory under certain other acts and statutes. Food colors, for example, cannot be sold under the provisions of the PFA Act if they are not ISI marked. The Agamark standard, this was set up by the Directorate of Marketing and Inspection of the Government of India by introducing an Agriculture Produce Act in 1937. Rules under this Act enable the government to lay down great specifications of quality for raw food items, grade designations, and also methods of marking to indicate various grades. Anyone willing to grade and pack in accordance with the provisions of the Act and rules is authorized to use a mark in addition to his own trade brands.
the very first standards laid down were for pure ghee, and the AGMARK label number no. 1, special grade, was first affixed by an authorized packer in Calcutta in February 1938. This heralded an era of food quality control and quality certification under Agmark, for the first time in India. For the domestic market, grading and quality control under Omark is voluntary, but for export purposes, it has been made compulsory under the provisions of the Export Act of 1963. The commodities for export with mandatory Agmark certification include food items as well as non-food items, like wool, tobacco, cotton, etc. A total of 41 or so different commodities are certified with the Agmark. Some food items in this list are major spices like black pepper, cardamom, chilies, garlic, onion, ginger and turmeric, minor spices like coriander seeds and cumin seeds, vegetable oils like groundnut oil and safflower oil. Examples of non-food items on this list are sandalwood oil, wool, goat hair, castor oil, tobacco and sun hemp. 16.4.3 Agencies involved in consumer protection The provisions of the PFA Act are drafted with the main purpose of protecting the consumer from adulterated foods that are injurious to him. The drafting of these rules has been the function of the Central Committee for Food Standards. The Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, formulates standards for food, and these standards are complementary to those adopted by the PFA. These standards apply to the raw materials, the processed foods, the packing material, and even the premises where the food is processed. There are four regulatory bodies that determine and control the quality of processed foods. In order of importance, these are I, the consumer, 2, the research and development, R&D, or the quality control, QC, scientists in the country, 3. The government organizations like the Central Committee for Food Standards, CCFS, the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act, PFA, and the Enforcement Directorate for it, Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, and 4. The Parliament. The Parliament which has the people's representatives enacts the laws, generally on the recommendations of the CCFS, though it is not bound by such recommendations. Governmental agencies, the PFA departments in central and state governments and, BIS enforce their regulations and or keep a check on the standards and quality, through various central and state laboratories as mentioned earlier. Voluntary agencies, several voluntary agencies have programs of educating the consumer so that he can safeguard themselves from eating adulterated food. Private food testing laboratories are also available for carrying out food analysis. Most progressive companies have their own quality control laboratories. A number of consumer protection organizations have sprung up in urban centers to protect consumers. The Consumer Guidance Society of India is one example of a voluntary consumer protection organization. It was started with Bombay as its headquarters, and branches in major cities. The society tries to create consumer awareness of the various forms of adulteration and develops consumer resistance to such adulterated food products by giving talks over the radio and using other mass media like putting up exhibitions in educational institutions. Enlightened consumers are on the executive of this society. The society gets food samples tested and brings out a publication Kirnath in which consumers are kept informed about the measures taken to combat malpractices in respect of food. They also try to educate the consumer about simple methods of detecting adulteration in foods. Many other consumer organizations focus on helping the consumer in securing legal redress. If a person buys food, how does he or she know it is adulterated? What measures can be taken to protect the interest of the consumer who has been cheated of his money's worth? It issues such as this that are taken up by local consumers, organizations who advise the consumer on the best cause of action. Check your progress exercise. 4. 1. Name the I. Indian law that provides us protection against adulteration of foods. 2. Indian law that ensures hygienic and safe manufacture of fruit products. 3. 
Indian law that ensures the availability of safe and hygienic meats. 4. Indian organizations that prescribe and certify standards of quality in food items. 16.5. Let us sum up. In this unit you have learnt that Food can get contaminated between the time it is harvested, slaughtered or manufactured and the time it is consumed. Contaminated food can be harmful for health. Food can be adulterated by either adding something undesirable to it or by removing something desirable from it. There are laws to protect us from adulterated foods and to ensure safe and hygienic food items in the market. There are organizations that prescribe desirable standards of food quality and Consumers have formed consumer organizations to protect themselves against unfair trade practices. 16.6 .6. Glossary Contamination To be infected with harmful substances Density The mass of a given substance per unit volume Intoxication Poisoning Leach the movement of substances present in a food into a surrounding liquid. Lubricant, that which lubricates. Pesticides, that which kills pests. Pre-shipment, prior to shipping. Promulgated, to make known by declaration. Sanitary, hygienic. Specific gravity, the ratio of the density of a material to the density of some standard material such as water as a specific temperature for example 4 degrees Celsius. Specific gravity hydrometer, a hydrometer that indicates the specific gravity of a liquid with reference to water at a particular temperature. Standards, a definite measure. Substandard, below is the measure prescribed. Sustenance, nourishment. Toxic. Harmful to health. Note, for the appendix look at the screen. Thank you, we will see you in the next video.